They are responsible for causing black fever. These organisms can cause plague. They are called as Yersinia. They are having three subtypes. Importantly, these are Yersinia pestis, Yersinia pseudotuberculosis, Yersinia enterocolitica. Yersinia pestis is an agent of plague. Yersinia pseudotuberculosis causes mesenteric adenitis, and Yersinia enterocolitica causes food poisoning. They were discovered by Professor Yersin and Kita Sato in year 1894. Both of them discovered these organisms independently. Hence, we call this genus as Yersinia. They are the causative agents of plague. They are gram-negative Cocobacilli belonging to family Enterobacteriaceae. They show the property of bipolar staining, which gives them a safety pin kind of appearance. They are non motile, non sporing capsulated, aerobic, as well as facultative anaerobic. They are non-lactose fermenters. Yersinia is one of the most virulent microorganisms and is the bacilli in which only 10 bacilli are required to cause a disease. Coming on to its pathogenesis, the virulence factors include the capsular envelope antigen or F1 antigen which is best produced at 37 degrees C. There are antiphagocytic VNW antigens, the coagulase, fibrinolysins, endotoxins, which can cause GIC and shock, and Yersinia outer proteins, which is antiphagocytic and inhibits cytokine production by neutrophils and macrophages. Source of infection Rodents are the main reservoirs of this disease. These include rats and bandicoots. Since it is spread from the animals, hence it is also called as zoonotic disease. The plague which spreads from one human to another is called as pneumonic plague. Mode of transmission or route of infection is by the bite of red flea. Red flea is an insect parasite on rats like lice. There are two subspecies that is Xenopsila sheopis in North India and Xenopsila astia in South India. These are all insect parasites. In mnemonic plague, infection is transmitted from one person to another by cough or droplet inhalation. Let us talk about the sequence of the events which lead to the plague. Xenopsila sheopis is the main culprit which transmits the plague from one rat to another and from rats to human beings. Xenopsila sheopis bites an infected rat. We are choosing Xenopsila sheopis as a prototype. The rat, which is infected, is already suffering from plague. The 
the bacilli and blood is taken up by the flea and reaches the stomach of the flea. The blood clots due to the presence of the coagulase enzyme and the bacilli multiply in large number in the clot, thus inside the stomach of the red flea. as shown in the given figure. The mass of the bacilli blocks the proventriculus of the flea, which is the sucking part of the flea. The blocked flea bites another rat, which is a healthy rat. Bacteria and blood is regurgitated into the bite wound. Thus, there is transmission of infection. The cycle continues. When the diseased rat dies, the rat flea leaves its body. It is assumed that large number of the rats of a particular area die. Since rat flea cannot fly, it bites the lower limb of the human beings. The fleas, bacteria enter the regional lymph nodes. Here the inguinal lymph nodes. The lymph nodes enlarge and separate. These lymph nodes become painful and tender. This condition is called as bubo. Hence, the plague so produced is called as bubonic plague. Then the septic emboli may reach the lungs may give rise to a pneumonic plague in which the lungs are involved and both may embolize to the blood. It can enter the blood stream and give rise to the septicemic plague. Let us talk about the clinical features of the different kinds of plagues. In case of the bubonic plague, there is enlargement of the regional lymph nodes. They enlarge and separate and become painful and tender. It is accompanied by high fever, myalgia, and prostration. In case of the pneumonic plague, there is cough with blood tinged sputum. It is highly infectious and human to human spread is possible. Septicemic plague is the terminal stage of the plague. It is highly fatal due to the presence of endotoxin discussed earlier. Let us talk about the laboratory diagnosis of the plague or Yersinia. The specimen collection depends upon the kind of the plague. In case of the bubonic plague, there is lymph node aspirate collection. In pneumonic plague, sputum is collected as a specimen. In septicemic plague, the blood is collected. The methods include microscopy, in which gram stain is used. The gram staining shows the presence of the gram negative coccobacilli. Then there is a vasal stain. Even gene cell stain and methylene blue can be used. They give rise to a safety pin kind of appearance due to bipolar staining. Then there is fluorescent and body stain. It is used for tissues to demonstrate bacteria after biopsy. The culture include the blood agar usage and which 
Brown colonies are produced due to the absorption of the human pigment from the blood. And McConk is agar, non lactose fermenting colonies are produced. Growth in liquid media. When your senior pestis is grown into a flask containing liquid medium with a layer of ghee or oil on the top, a characteristic growth occurs where the growth hangs down from broad into the surface. Such a growth is called as stalactite growth pattern. Such a broth is also called as ghee broth. Animal inoculation. The specimen can be rubbed on the shaven skin of guinea pig. The skin is shaved and then the blood is spread over the shaven portion. In case the spear is positive, guinea pig dies. Serology. Antibodies to F1 antigen or capsular antigen can be demonstrated by passive heme agglutination or a complement fixation test. A titer of 128 is significant in these. Even enzyme linked immunosorbent assay or ELISA can be done for demonstration of immunoglobulin M and immunoglobulin G antibodies. PCR is also done for direct detection of the sample. The treatment includes tetracyclines or streptomycin or sulfonamides. The profile axis of the plague is done under following headings general measures. In general measures, the control of rodents and fleas can be done by informing the health authorities of a particular area. Special measures include vaccine called as Hafkin's vaccine, which contains Kildare Senior at 37 degrees Celsius, Sokey's vaccine, which is a modified Hafkin vaccine, which is used presently. Epidemiology it's a zoonotic disease and occurs in two natural cycles, the urban cycle and the sylvetic cycle or the jungle cycle. In urban cycle, domestic rats play a role. There are reservoirs of infection. In sylvetic cycle or jungle cycle, wild rodents are involved.